Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, a telescope looks at something, people go for a walk, and a bird. Starting off the news this week, the European Southern Observatory's aptly named Very Large Telescope, or VLT, in collaboration with telescopes from around the world, have been monitoring a tidal disruption event 215 million light years away for the past six months. This week, they published some of their findings. Astronomically speaking, a tidal disruption event is when a star gets close enough to a black hole to be pulled apart by it, resulting in something called spaghettification. This star tearing itself apart produces a bright flare, and it is this which scientists have been observing. This isn't a particularly common event, and it's certainly an opportunity to witness something quite special, and so any piece of information that the researchers can get about this type of event is welcome. One such piece is the fact that during this process the black hole can launch a powerful blast of material outwards, using the energy that's released as the black hole consumes the star. Also in the news this last week is the incredible description of the world's longest fossilised human trackway at White Sands National Park in New Mexico. This remarkable trackway displays the out and return journey of a person, possibly an adolescent or small adult woman, as they travelled 1.5 kilometres with a child. This child's footprints appear and vanish several times along the trackway, indicating that they were being carried for part of the journey, and the shape of the other person's prints change quite a bit, seemingly due to the shifting weight of carrying the child. The prints of a giant ground sloth and Colombian mammoth also cross the track at certain points, however the human prints don't show any changes that might be evidence of the person looking out for predators. This is a really amazing discovery that gives us a truly unique insight into the life of a human who lived more than 10,000 years ago. And now, over to Ben from the future. Thanks, Doug. We've got some more amazing news next, as a new genus and species of Drapanosaur has been described, and been given one of the coolest sounding names I've heard in a while, Skybolonix scapta. This new taxon originates from the Chinle Formation, an upper Triassic formation in the southwestern US, and is based on some disarticulated hand claws. The study also compares the morphology of various Drapanosaur hand claws to the claws of mammals and living reptiles, hoping to see if they could discover what these bizarre Triassic animals were using them for. Drapanosaurus itself was found to have large second claws similar to hook and pull digging anteaters, though its other claws are similar to other modern tree climbing animals whereas Skybolonyx appears to have been adapted primarily to digging, a very interesting discovery. Finally, there's been a paper published this week that has described a new genus and species of hawk-like, day-active bird from the Oligocene of Poland. Named Aviraptor longicrus, this was a small raptor that appears to have fed on smaller birds, and looked somewhat like living sparrowhawks. This discovery is especially significant since this new taxon actually existed alongside the first passerines and modern type hummingbirds in the northern hemisphere, leading the researchers to suggest that the diversification of these birds might have triggered the evolution of small bird feeding raptors, meaning this could be one of the earliest examples of predator prey coevolution in birds. So, some very interesting discoveries this week. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.